David Irwin, uh, Packaging Director for the Agenda with Steve Paking. Joining us tonight is Erhan Doan from Marmara University in Istanbul. Erhan is going to talk to us tonight about the growing protest in Istanbul over the destruction of a local park. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good evening. So can you tell us why this park is so important to the people of Istanbul and why these protests have started? Uh, Istanbul is uh, a so big city. Uh, we have around 14 million people living in the town and we have quite uh, little green spaces, green spots left. Uh, and Taksim is just the, one of the biggest centers of the uh, city uh, and in Taksim area there are a lot of uh, shopping centers, uh, shop, shops, etc. Uh, but green uh, space is very little there. So for people uh, it was important uh, to keep that green spot there. Uh, that was the simple reason why everything started actually. And the reports that we're having is more than 2,000 people have been arrested. I believe now two people have died as a result of the protest. Uh, what do you think about the government's reaction to the protest and how, how the police have reacted? Yeah, at the beginning, government uh, could not manage uh, the crisis. There was a problem. There was a peaceful demonstration of the people. People were saying that those uh, trees should not be taken from the park and park should not be demolished. It was quite a peaceful uh, and green demonstration. However, uh, police authorities were very brutal at the uh, at first uh, instance. Uh, they attacked with tear gas uh, to the protesters. Uh, and this created a big uh, growing public anger uh, in the city and uh, day by day number of people who went to the park and uh, showed their uh, solidarity to the people uh, in the park who initiated the protest uh, increased uh, and this created a big tension and anger uh, prime minister also made some very uh, um, I can say aggressive uh, declarations uh, at the beginning, uh, but now it's getting better, I guess. In Canada, we would be very surprised if our Prime Minister got involved in local politics over a park. I know that Taxim Square in Istanbul is kind of the cultural heart of Istanbul, but still, and I know it's a very, a very limited green space, but for a prime minister to get involved in local politics over a park is a little surprising. Why is the prime minister so closely involved in this issue? Uh, we should remember that our prime minister started his political career as mayor of Istanbul. And he was known as the successful mayor of the town. Uh, and he owes his uh, political career as prime minister of the country to those years. Uh, he started uh, early 90s, uh, he was uh, the mayor of the town and in 2002 uh, elections, with that elections, uh, he left uh, his position as uh, being mayor of the town and he participated to uh, national elections and they, they won the elections. Uh, after a short uh, period in which he was not prime minister after his party won the elections, he became the prime minister. Uh, but his connection with the town uh, was always there. And we should remember that this is a huge city. It is said that more than 14 million people living in the city uh, and uh, the rent year is very high uh, in this town. Uh, so every decision means uh, money, uh, I have to say. Uh, and he, I get personally engaged in the town. That's one of the main reasons why he's involved so deep. 
Now, uh, the protest is spreading across uh, Istanbul. It's starting to show up in other cities and towns across the country. I even understand in your neighborhood there's been protests in, in, the, in the streets, and you're quite far from Taksim. Have you ever seen protests like this in recent memory? Um, yeah, during the 90s we have something similar to that. that. Uh, especially, uh, it was something about uh, a gang within the state, uh, and at that time, uh, which is known as Susurluk incident and the following incident, uh, we saw that people were reacting, but it was not something like we have been experiencing at the moment. At that time, people were just passively uh, showing their reaction to what was going on by making noises from their windows uh, and uh, uh, offing and owning their lights, etc. But this, it, it was not something like this. Now people are on the streets and they are uh, openly uh, declaring their uh, anger and opposition to what government uh, was deciding. Now, uh, as I show some pictures here of the protests, um, this is obviously uh, going beyond um, just a, a protest over a park. And we're starting to see people, as I said, uh, protesting in other cities and other towns. What do you think this protest is about now? Um, this is about uh, the arbitrary uh, behaviors of the government and its leader, in my opinion. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, after he won the third election with a big uh, uh, majority, uh, they won nearly 50% of the votes, uh, he started to think, I guess, that he could do whatever uh, he wanted to do. Uh, and he, he made a lot of speeches and decisions in which he tried to shape uh, the life in the country, including Istanbul. Uh, so he makes a lot of uh, announcements, speeches, in which he talks about the drinking habits of the people, uh, or how many children should people have. Is uh, encouraging people to have three kids at least. He has reasons for that, but in my opinion, he involved uh, too much, and people are not happy with that. But these are quite innocent compared to what, what is going on uh, at uh, public decisions on other spaces. Uh, regarding the public tenders, uh, there are a lot of rumors. It is said that government is giving the tenders and the bids to uh, its own supporters, party supporters, etc. Uh, this arbitrariness, I guess, and uh, overseeing attitude of prime minister himself uh, to opposition uh, and the minorities in general uh, are some of the reasons I can count here. Well, uh, Prime Minister Erdogan has won three consecutive elections. With each election, he seems to be getting more of the popular vote. Yes. So some people are saying this is really urban centers opposing his rule, but he's very, very popular in, in the rural uh, areas of the country, the more conservative areas of the country, and that, we're, that this protest is somewhat a sign of this growing gap between the cities and the rural areas of Istanbul and between liberals and conservatives. Do you think that's fair to say? Uh, the ruling party is an urban movement, I have to say. However, uh, this urban uh, party, uh, urban movement, carries the sensitivities of the rural areas and the traditional communities to the political center. In that sense, it was quite successful, I have to say. However, uh, it seems that, this is what I see from the demonstrations, 
urban uh, young generations uh, are feeling at the moment that they are so much isolated and not respected by uh, the government. Uh, they carry it, uh, rural values or traditional values or religious values to the political center, but the urban values are not that much respected. And we, should for, we shouldn't forget that urban people uh, are uh, mainly individuals. And we had uh, a couple of uh, coups in our recent history. Uh, together with these coups, um, we lost our organized society as well. Uh, so urban masses are not organized. They could not uh, get well organized. They could not develop political programs. They could not raise their claims in an effective way. In my opinion, they are underrepresented uh, at the moment. I am talking about uh, urban, young, modern people. Uh, and women are uh, much more worse compared to men uh, in this uh, equation, in my opinion. Uh, did you, when you were speaking there, were you saying that you had several coups, uh, military coups in Turkey's past, and this is what's made it hard to organize? Is that what you were referring to? Yes, yes. We had uh, three coups uh, since 1960, uh, and in every coup, uh, newly organized uh, political, urban political centers or groups, modern groups, were um, destructed by the coup government uh, because they didn't like uh, the way that they make politics. Uh, so we don't have uh, a modern organized society. We are having, but in every attempt to create uh, an organized society, uh, it got uh, a reaction uh, from military. Now, uh, that's one of the common, uh, one of the common views in the West is Prime Minister Erdogan has been very good for Turkey's economy, that he's brought in uh, democratic reforms, actually opening up the government, moving the government uh, further away from military influence, closer to being considered for EU membership. But these protests seem to stand in opposition to that view, that he's perhaps more authoritarian than, than we think, perhaps more uh, conservative or, or religious oriented than we think. Is, is that true? In my opinion, he is not that much different from uh, a European Christian Democrat Party leader. He is a religious person and, uh, you know, he wants to shape the world as he uh, see the world. However, uh, Turkey is a, a constitution, is a republic with uh, a secular constitution, so uh, there are some limits. I guess uh, in those limits we have some problems. If we had uh, an effectively functioning rule of law, uh, prime minister's personal attitudes would not influence our daily political uh, life that much. Uh, it's quite understandable, everyone has their own views. But if the rights of the people, or if the people feel that their rights are guaranteed by the rule of law, in that case, uh, they would feel much more safe and secure. There are two more things I would like to add to this uh, analysis. Uh, we, ha we have been experiencing a, a problem regarding uh, free press uh, at the moment. Uh, we see a very heavy censor. It's not a legal censor. Perhaps it's a, a censor which is uh, a result of political pressures or a self-censor, uh, whichever you choose. Uh, people were very angry to this uh, media uh, representation of the issue as well. Uh, yesterday, I guess, there were some people who demonstrated in front of a TV station uh, uh, and told them, how much money do you want uh, to uh, show our demonstrations on your uh, TV? Uh, I also heard that uh, there was a 
fundraising campaign uh, and demonstrators were uh, fundraising uh, to give an advertisement to New York Times, I guess. It's quite weird why they make an advertisement in New York Times. Perhaps they are trying to ridicule what we are experiencing at the moment. You know, if you do not uh, allocate a space for us uh, in your uh, programs, we will go and uh, give ads to New York Times. It is the message. So you're saying that the protesters were fundraising money to take out an ad in the New York Times to highlight the protests because the media, main media companies in Turkey aren't covering the story. Is that correct? Yes, but uh, it is to ridicule uh, what is going on in Turkey. Uh, they are criticizing uh, Turkish media uh, to show them how uh, weird their uh, attitude about the demonstrations. Uh, their uh, press, uh, uh, their publication uh, ideology or way, they are planning to do that. I don't uh, Turkey has always had a reputation of being a very difficult place for journalists to work freely, especially under the military rule, had a very high proportion of journalists in jail. Has Prime Minister Erdogan not really changed the type of uh, access the media has? Why is the media covering not covering this story as much as you think they would? Um, there are some structural problems, I guess, because Media uh, is highly dependent uh, to capital, and if you uh, examine uh, the profile of uh, big media uh, giants uh, in Turkey, you see that they are running uh, other businesses as well. So this uh, connection uh, of media with uh, the other businesses of their buses influences them. If one of the media uh, lets uh, make broadcasting uh, about the government in a negative way, they would be punished through a tax burden or uh, a negative government decision about their uh, business. Uh, but internet media uh, is changing uh, this problem uh, to a certain extent and we know that internet was uh, used quite widely uh, by people to communicate. So you're saying social media, informal media is kind of taking the place of mainstream media and getting the protest out and the images out? Yeah, but people still expecting the mainstream media uh, to uh, allocate a space for them. Uh, now, some uh, reports have claimed, you know, this is Turkey's Arab Spring. Are the protests that drastic? Could it could could they spread uh, that widely to be an Arab Spring type revolt, or do you think that's just overreporting? Uh, in my opinion, it's overreporting. Uh, there are uh, some major differences between the Arab uh, countries in which we saw the demonstrations and regime changes and Turkey. We have a, a successfully uh, functioning uh, electoral politics uh, since 1946 uh, and we have seen several uh, government changes in quite different directions from uh, uh, the previous governments. So we can effectively change governments with elections. Uh, there is no problem on that. So if people are not happy with uh, the government, we have means to do that. The problem here, I guess, as I mentioned before, we don't have an effective rule of law. Another problem is related with the uh, opposition political parties. Uh, opposition is quite weak at the moment. They are. Uh, experiencing uh, the difficulties that left experience uh, all around the world. I'm talking about the left-wing political party. So people feel that they are not well uh, represented at political level. If they felt that uh, there was a political party or uh, 
a political mean through which they can express their uh, anger or position, uh, we wouldn't have this much radical uh, reactions. Uh, but at the same time, police authorities at the beginning uh, did not, uh, were not successful on uh, dealing with uh, a peaceful demonstration. Uh, they used excessive force, and this is one of the reasons why everything started. You've mentioned uh, a couple times now about the problems of the rule of law. Uh, why do those problems exist? I mean, you're a democratic system, you have an independent judiciary. Why, why is there a problem with rule of law in, in Turkey? Um. There are structural problems. Uh, the, in a democracy, you have to uh, have a separation of powers. Uh, executive, judiciary, uh, and legislative authorities should be different uh, and should not intervene to each other's uh, area. But in our system, uh, we cannot speak of a effectively, efficiently functioning uh, separation of powers. Uh, judicial uh, system is uh, also uh, not as free as it should be. Uh, and we are passing through uh, a major uh, transformation, as you mentioned before. Uh, we have been uh, adopting uh, many uh, progressive uh, laws uh, because we are on EU accession process, even though the light at the end of the tunnel is not clear for the moment. Uh, so we are passing through a process, but our judicial system seems as if not ready for that. That's one of the reasons. And they are not functioning well. The court decisions take uh, too much time. Uh, people do not feel satisfied with the decisions taken by the courts. Uh, we have appealing mechanisms, but it takes a lot of time uh, to get a decision out of that, etc. So it is lacking. Uh, if it was uh, functioning effectively and efficiently, people would feel that, you know, if government, if executive do something wrong, we have the legal system. We could go to the court and uh, open a case, uh, and if we are right, we could uh, get what we want from the legal system. But in the country, there are many court decisions which are not implemented by the government authorities itself. So, I mean, the problem is so huge, but uh, it is lacking. Uh, this is what I can clearly say. So, as we take a, a look at uh, some more uh, pictures of the protest, um, how do you think this is going to end? How does the uh, government uh, resolve this? What do the protesters want in the end? Um, today, we see some very positive uh, messages from the government side. At the beginning it was not so because Prime Minister uh, Erdogan uh, it seems that taught those reactions uh, as personal reactions to himself or his authority. Uh, but uh, thanks God he is uh, in an uh, international uh, visit. He is in Morocco at the moment. Uh, and today, Deputy Prime Minister uh, made an announcement and he said that uh, we understand uh, the protesters, uh, uh, government uh, agree that uh, when the demonstrations first started, police authorities used excessive force and uh, government initiated an investigation to uh, understand the reason why this excessive force was used at the beginning and the ones who will uh, the ones who are responsible from this excessive use of force 
uh, will be punished. This was the reaction. And I guess people uh, was expecting this from the government and they did it today. But this is the sixth or seventh day of the demonstrations. They were a bit late. And I understand that um, there is a call for a general strike or a general strike is, all, is starting in uh, Istanbul and may spread through the country. Uh, do you think this could topple the government or will the government survive this protest? I don't think that there are uh, we we have a uh, clear uh, we have clear rules to change the government. Uh, government first should resign uh, and go uh, to elections. And uh, if they lose in the elections, they will change. I don't think that uh, it will lead to uh, a change of government soon, uh, but it is. Uh, a process in which government should be much more sensitive to the demands and sensitivities of uh, the minorities and the opposition in the country. Is there anything else, sir, you think we should cover in this uh, discussion? No, uh, I guess we referred many of the topics. I want to uh, thank you very much for joining us, Erhan Doan from. Marmara University in Istanbul. It was a pleasure speaking to you today. It was my pleasure.